like now to um, announce the, the next talk uh, from Professor Heinrich Hoffmann. He is Director for Powder Technology and Laboratory Institute of Material in Lausanne. And his talk is going on uh, iron oxide nanoparticles for imaging. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I will speak about iron oxide nanoparticles for imaging. More, I don't go in very detailed results. I will show you more or less, let me say, a summary of uh, results, what we have reached, and conclusions, especially, huh, of the last 10 years in this field, working in this field. Yeah. And uh, I have to look here. Yeah. Uh, first, I lay, I'd like to say, look, uh, this is not new. Huh? You know, everybody knows that iron oxide uh, is used since a long time, huh? 10 years or more, yeah, as contraception for MRI, especially for the liver. Now, this product disappears from the market, especially for economical reasons, yeah, because the market was too small, and uh, it's only the application more or less in the liver, in the healthy part of the liver. And secondly, uh, it was uh, uh, T2 contrast, the black spot, which is also not the optimum for our uh, clinical doctors. Then another product, Fermoxitol, is produced for iron deficiency uh, anemia, for this treatment of this disease. And is now used because there are no other products on the market, more and more as counters agent yeah, for MRI. But we have some problems with this uh, product. Yeah, it's withdrawn from the market by medical, medical agency because there are severe problems. Yeah, and uh, it's not on the market in, uh, in Europe, it's also not in Switzerland. And there are strong warnings from the FDA <laughs> for their applications. And uh, gadolinium is uh, now also more and more under investigation because, you know, gadolinium is found in the brain as contrast agent. So we have here really a little bit uh, a problem with, uh, with inorganic huh? um, uh, contrast agents. So uh, our working hypothesis was, uh, okay, if you have a problem of the market side, then we have to go for more targeting, better, so we open the field for other applications, uh, better targeting or retination, specific retination in, in some organs. Yeah, so we need coating and functionalization to optimize this. And then uh, we need a higher relaxivity uh, so that we have a, with less material a better contrast. Uh, this is the material side what we need yeah? and uh, to improve. And then we have for sure uh, this uh, problem with the protein corona and others. That means this is nothing and a synonym for interact of the particle in a biological environment. We have also to look on this to understand what happens. So very shortly, uh, uh, where are the situation on the market on the clinical trials at the moment with iron oxide nanoparticles? Uh, you see that uh, um, especially with nanoparticles itself, uh, huge activity in the US and also in Europe. Yeah, and in Europe, especially in, in France, and in the UK, in Europe itself, in France. And if you look on iron oxide nanoparticle, yeah, uh, where we have uh, clinical trials, you see in Europe uh, is the UK, yeah, but also in France and a little bit in the rest of Europe. So there are some activity, yeah, and you can have a look on the uh, activity in this field. You see here, for example, for ferromoxitol, even it's under discussion, but uh, this is uh, between 2010 and 2017. MRI contrast for lymph node metastasis. Yeah? Then, uh, in the in, in, for sure, for cancer detection, brain structure. Yeah? Then, uh, vascular inflammation is also a very interesting area for this uh, uh, iron oxide for uh, contrast, because maybe you know. Uh, if you inject the particle, they're taken up by the macrophages. Macrophages goes to the place of inflammation. So you can then detect it. And we have done it also for arthritis. This works very well. Yeah, uh, then also multiple sclerosis and others, you see. So this is permoxitol. It's used uh, for a lot of application. If it's a relatively simple particle, yeah, it's an iron oxide, five nanometers with uh, carbodextran coating. Then we have... Uh, Iron isomaltose and others here, you know, these are more used for iron deficiency anemia. And this is also a little bit a strange situation in this field. They are called iron sucrose. Yeah, even they are inside iron oxide nanoparticle of four nanometers. And again, a coating around, but you don't find it under uh, iron oxide nanoparticle in the literature. Yeah, then we have other particles. 
uh, Siena uh, for detection rate of false negative rate of central lymph nodes, and others here for detection of leukemia. Go on particle with silica iron oxide shells, very complex particle. Again, here for stem cell uh, detection and following tracking. Yeah. And then we have here other uh, particles which are in anemia and uh, pharmacokinetic and toxicity. So there are several huh, activities in this field. Yeah, and what is the difference between these particles? Yeah, uh, we have uh, in the uh, ferromoxitol, it's a polyglucosorbitol carboxymethyl ether yeah, as coating, or we have a simple dextran coat of particles, and the more sophisticated you see here have uh, uh, spine conjugated with anti CD43 antibodies. Uh, uh, are existing, this is relative complex, and we have also other things here uh, with uh, uh, Pexalan, relative complex coating, which are uh, uh, in clinical tests now. No? And in the iron phase is, you see here, in for the anemia, is a more acagenite, is a iron uh, hydroxyoxide, yeah? uh, with a little bit chloride in, must be, otherwise you have not this phase, and then or then it's uh, the well-known magnetite, magemite, uh, particles. Okay, so uh, in the research area, now these pictures are shown, this type of picture are shown very, several times. Yeah, we have uh, called this increasing stuff of uh, more and more iron oxide for medical applications. You see all the keywords which are used to, to make these pictures. Yeah, and if you look more detailed, uh, contrast agents, we have still a lot of research activity in contrast agents based on iron oxide. Yeah, uh, we have it this in, new, uh, in uh, Europe, yeah, and uh, also in US most, and, and then also then the other part is in China. And we have for hyperthermia also interesting application you see here. Uh, uh, we have also still, we have maybe one tenth of the papers goes in the, in the area of hyperthermia. Yeah, and uh, you see it also that MRI contrast is still the most important than hyperthermia, and then we have drug delivery and some other small things. This picture is not absolutely correct, of course, all these particles for treatment of the anemia is not involved in this uh, picture here. No? So, open questions still, high efficacy of contrast and magnetic heating agent, so we need a higher effic efficacy. We need a reproducibility, where several times uh, 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 mentioned in this uh, conference anyway, but also in the research, but also for products biocompatibility, we need manufacturing method conform with regulation rules, scalable, GMP, and then we have in the morning, you have heard uh, some uh, remarks about this in this room, then we need a new field of applications, this means market, only deliver, this is not the market, we need really new, that means systemic delivery, targeting is very important, we have to look that uh, we have the regulations which are good for our product, yeah, and then, as I said, more uh, economically and more efficient than existing methods. Very important. Uh, what is the benefit? What is the unique selling uh, position? All this stuff uh, uh, in here. We have to show what is really better with the iron oxide than with the existing methods. And this is, at the moment, I'm not so sure that uh, we can convince medical doctors and pharmaceutical industry that what we have at the moment is really better than what is on the market. So we have to work also on this here. So our solution from our side yeah, is uh, part of what you see in a scalable two-step process. We do also precipitation as the most people do, but followed by a hydrothermal annealing so that uh, we have, and all this is in water, done without additives. So with this, we fulfill for sure uh, the uh, uh, conditions must be simple, it must be scalable, yeah, and must be easy to control. Yeah, and what we have to control here is only time and, you know, and, and temperature, yeah, not more. With this, we can have very uh, high crystallinity of the particles. Yeah, we have nice shape, it's not so important, but high crystallinity. Yeah, and therefore, we have a very high relaxivity of the particle. And also important, huh, uh, we have, uh, let me say, no additives, uncontrollable, uh, uh, surfactants on the surface at the moment, huh? after the production. We pay, for sure, if you do like this, with the size distribution. Huh? The size distribution is for sure not so narrow as you get it in an organic solvent. Huh? 
but we have not to replace them at the end the molecules from the surface. And you get here, if you compare with reservists and others, a much higher relaxivity in a clinical MRI. Then uh, I have to look, uh, it's here, yeah. Then the other one is no surfactants, as I said, so we have less problems uh, with biocomposition. So we are much freer uh, in adapting. Then the next step is the coating. So we go, uh, even we have the problem here, not, no covalent binding of coated uh, molecules normally. Yeah? So we have to look that we have at least a strong uh, physisorption, chemisorption on the surface, so that we have not a direct replacement of the coating by the proteins. So we are using phosphate groups, molecules huh, with uh, phosphate groups of carboxylic groups, which gives a strong adhesion to the iron oxide. Yeah, see here we have here the coating on the surface. Yeah, and then to this we have to add the targeting molecule, if possible a small molecule, not a huge antibody, a small molecule up to mere on the surface so that we uh, have still a small size of the particle. And then the other point uh, to get through the whole stuff is active participating on the development of method for nanoparticle characterization and toxicity assessment. Yeah? Uh, this means uh, size measurement is not standardized, so we have to do this. Density measurement, agglomerate density, toxicity assay, dispersibility, dosage, yeah? all this. For example, we worked on all this for standardization, the physics behind, the science behind, so that now uh, we, we are ready uh, of several methods which we have developed goes now uh, to the uh, OECD work group for further development of standards. So we have also to do work here in this area to get it through what we have produced in the lab. And then also is the control of the protein corona very important because if you have, don't control this uh, protein corona, you cannot control the toxicity, the biodistribution, and other things. And this control of the protein corona means you have to control the uh, coating and you have to control how you uh, administrate the particle to the body and to the right system. For example, if you go in the blood or in the lymph system, you need another coating because then you have another uh, pro, uh, protein corona on the surface, therefore another behavior of the particle in the body. So you have to know for what you're developing the, the, your particle. If you don't know the correct application, it's very difficult to develop something useful. Okay, yeah, and then it's the new uh, regulations yeah, which are coming in. Yeah, then you have another problem with the iron. Uh, uh, if they present uh, high or um, uh, if, okay, if there are anyway, huh, uh, medium potential of internal exposure, we have it in iron oxide. And the other one is we are using iron oxide. Iron, iron is also used as a medicament. Yeah, uh, uh, iron deficiency enemy. So this means we are here also in class three. So we fall maybe with this nanoparticle in the class three uh, in this new regulation, which means a lot of control and a lot of investment to go through. So conclusion is. Uh, there are particles which have a high relaxivity, so that we, have, we need much less uh, to inject for a good image uh, in uh, MRI. Yeah, targeting is still a challenging task, yeah, from my point of view, to find the right molecules to prevent shielding from protein corona. Need a high residence time for circulation that we really pass on the right organ. Residence time in the target organ, but on the other hand, it should be not too long. Just in the morning was said, not more than 29 days, yeah, so that we can, uh, each month we can do an uh, image. Yeah. Then uh, we have to show that the benefit risk is much better than what we have at the moment on the market. Yeah. Then we have to look on the impact of the coating and targeting on metabolism, metabolism of iron oxide. There's a lot of is uh, unknown. And then we have to think about if this combination of diagnosis and treatment it seems to be real, it is possible, uh, but if it's really also uh, useful for cleaning application. With this, I'd like to thank uh, my collaborators working in this area and the groups uh, which are working in this project and you for your attention. President Hoffmann, thank you very much for this very interesting talk. Are there any questions from the audience? Since you already know that I'm also working with my yeah, group in iron oxide nanoparticles, what do you think, what 
type of application beside liver would be useful in uh, human beings? I think one is for sure the lymph nodes, huh? lymph mm. nodes metastasis, yeah? because I think this is a really uh, important thing. And we have with MRI, I think this is the nearest, huh? because we mm. can go then subcontinuously, so you can guide the particle, not guide, huh? but they go relatively easy yeah? to the lymph nodes. I think lymph nodes is one where we are working at the moment is lymph nodes uh, metastasis, and then Maybe then what is really important is if you can go to areas which we cannot image by optical methods, yeah, really uh, pancreas and, and other mm. things, I think these are the real challenging uh, okay. organs. Yeah. Okay. I don't think brain and so, because blood-brain barrier is uh, still difficult for this type of particles. Okay. Yeah. okay, so thank you, thank you very much again. Um, now I would like